This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Have you heard about all those reports on social media that General Motors will no longer supply replacement batteries for the Chevrolet Spark EV? Well, none of them are true. GM says there's just a temporary disruption in the supply of those batteries. No surprise there. What isn't getting disrupted these days? GM says it remains committed to providing replacement parts, including batteries, to Spark owners who need them. Jose Munoz used to be one of Carlos Ghosn's top lieutenants at Nissan. Then, when things all fell apart at Nissan, Hyundai snapped him up, and it sure likes what he's doing. Munoz is getting a bunch of promotions and additional duties. He was in charge of North and South America for the company. He's keeping that, but also getting Europe, India, the Middle East, and Africa. Moreover, he'll be in charge of all sales, service, and product planning for the entire company. And they're also putting him on Hyundai's board of directors. Hyundai says he's getting all of these promotions because Munoz consistently delivered successive months of record sales and profits for Hyundai and Genesis despite supply chain disruptions and the COVID-19 pandemic. Cybersecurity is a big problem that's not going away. So the Federal Trade Commission is telling dealers they need to follow detailed procedures and use specific criteria to protect consumer data. They also have to provide formal employee training programs and have third-party audits to make sure their vendors are following the same procedures. Car dealers collect a mountain of customer data, and the concern is it could be stolen and used for identity theft. And speaking of thieves, they're now going after batteries in electric scooters. Twelve people were arrested recently in Milan, Italy for stealing 700 batteries from e-scooters. And it's harder to steal them than you might think. The batteries have extensive coding and software interfaces, And if you don't get that right, the batteries are useless. So these are pretty sophisticated thieves. The battery cells are dismantled and sold on the black market or to the reconditioned secondhand market. And the batteries are estimated to cost 1,000 euros each. So that makes them an attractive target. Car company CEOs may not make as much money as Elon Musk, but the pay is still pretty good. GM CEO Mary Barra made $29.1 million last year. Ford's Jim Farley made nearly $23 million, while Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares took home $21 million last year. That's in short-term compensation for Mr. Tavares. His long-term pay could be worth as much as $80 million. Bucks. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility, manufacturing smarter, reducing CO2 emissions, making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. Chinese EV startups have been one of the bright spots in the Chinese market, even with chip shortages and COVID lockdowns. But last month, they saw sales drop nearly 40% compared to March. Leap Motor did the best of them with deliveries of just under 9,100 cars. Then came Xpeng and Fozon, then Neo and Netta round out the list of the top five NEV startups. And speaking of Neo, It started pre-production of its ET5 sedan at a new manufacturing plant in China. The ET5 is kind of like Neo's version of the Tesla Model 3. It's a mid-sized sedan that's said to have up to 1,000 kilometers or over 620 miles of range. And deliveries kick off in September. The Japanese yen is sinking fast. It's the lowest it's been in 20 years. Only 130 yen to the dollar. And that is a bonanza for Japanese automakers because their exports are a lot cheaper. That's helped to ease COVID disruptions in China as well as part shortages. While all Japanese OEMs are benefiting, 
Mazda and Subaru stand to gain the most because they depend more on exports. But cheap currency cuts both ways. The cost of importing raw materials is skyrocketing for Japanese automakers. Looks like Ford was a little overcautious when initially quoting specs for the F-150 Lightning. We've known for a little while now that range will top out at up to 320 miles, which was more than the target 300 miles. But it will also have more power and capacity. The standard range version goes from 426 horsepower to 452, and the long range version goes from 563 to 580 horsepower. Both also see payload come in at over 2,200 pounds, which is an increase of 235 pounds. Towing will be another important aspect of the Lightning, and Ford is using the truck's tech to give owners a little more confidence in real range estimates. It looks at data like speed, temperature, driving habits, and even the truck's onboard scales and uses that information to provide a more accurate driving distance. The system gets better the more it's used and can even draw on cloud data from other Lightning owners that may have driven on the same route or operated under similar conditions. And one last bit of Lightning news. Ford revealed pricing for its home integration system, which allows an owner to power their home with the truck if the power goes out. It's a little under $3,900 and includes an inverter, transfer switch, and battery, but does not include installation. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, the average American household uses about 30 kilowatt hours of energy a day. So a fully charged F-150 Lightning with the large 131 kilowatt hour battery pack could power a home still using all of its appliances for a little more than four days. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Electric vehicles are heavier than ICEs because of those big heavy batteries, right? Well, that's not true when you compare the BMW 4 Series to a Tesla Model 3. Both cars are roughly the same size, yet the Tesla is actually 32 pounds lighter than the BMW. We're comparing the base model versions of both of these cars. And even more stunning, the Tesla Model 3 is 1,000 pounds lighter than the electric version of that BMW, the i4. So how did BMW get it so wrong? Well, we've got a video about that that gets into all the details, and it's all about scar tissue. And you can find the link in today's transcript or in the description box. The Jeep Wrangler is a rugged off-roader that can go anywhere and do anything. But when it comes to sales, Chad Kirshner from evpulse.com says, the Grand Cherokee is much more important to the brand. He recently got to drive the new plug-in hybrid version called the 4 by e in and around Austin, Texas, and he brings us this report. For 2022, the Grand Cherokee got a significant update. New powertrains are on the menu too. These are aimed at giving Jeep the green focused features it needs as gas prices soar and environmental restrictions tighten. All 4xE models are powered by a 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder engine mated to an electric motor which makes 375 horsepower and 470 pound feet of torque. For context, that's more performance than the Grand Cherokee equipped with the Hemi V8. An 8 speed automatic sends power to all four wheels and, depending on model, there's a low range mode for the ultimate rock crawling. This 4xE variant is rated to drive up to 25 miles on pure electricity. There are several controls in the Grand Cherokee to preserve battery life or to force the SUV to drive entirely gas-free. Ideally, these options let you save electric-only driving for the city and use the gasoline engine on the highway. 
On the outside, the Grand Cherokee looks smart and expensive. Inside, the Grand Cherokee is more Range Rover than the folks in England would likely care to admit. There's real wood trim. There are plush leather seats that massage. The metal you see is, get this, really metal. Then there's the presentation of the Macintosh audio system. Jeep uses Macintosh's gothic font for the branding, and it's the best factory audio system on the market, regardless of price. So, the Grand Cherokee says Jeep, but does it actually, you know, Jeep? We hit up a difficult rock climbing trail in a Trailhawk 4xE to find out. With an ELSD in the rear, four low, a front sway bar disconnect, and air suspension, the Grand Cherokee is one of the most capable SUVs we've driven off-road. Add in the fact that this 4xE does it in complete electrically driven silence. That makes it easier to hear the spotter yelling at you and the experience of convening with nature all the better. It's difficult to make off-roading look extreme on video, but trust us when we say this was a serious course. Nobody who buys a Grand Cherokee will attempt what we did on this ranch in Texas, but the fact is they could. So yes, it does say Jeep and it does, in fact, Jeep. The Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xE starts just shy of $60,000 and is eligible for the $7,500 federal tax credit. For more details on its tech, plus a comparison to its closest plug-in SUV competitors, click the link in the transcript or description box, or look for the EV Pulse channel on YouTube. But that's an end for today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.